gas prices are still high, but they are starting to drop. In less than two months, early voting starts for the May runoff election, and the legal battle continues over whether or not the state can investigate families of transgender children. I'm Stephen Dial. Here's your Fast Four. Following multiple protests, President Biden met with the family of Trevor Reed. Reed's family protested in Fort Worth when Biden visited North Texas in March and outside the White House this week. Reed is a Marine veteran from Texas who's been detained in Russia since 2019. He is one of two Texans currently detained in Russia, the other WNBA star Brittany Griner. Texas Attorney General Ken Paxton is now calling on parents in Austin to send complaints to the TEA following the district's recognition of Pride Week. The week-long celebration was last week and students participated in planned events. Paxton said the Pride Week was a form of teaching sex education and gender identity to students without permission from parents. School board meetings have become a hotbed for debate over political issues like mask mandates and critical race theory. Under continuous pressure, this week, Fort Worth ISD Superintendent Kent Scribner decided to resign in August, this ahead of his planned 2024 retirement. People in support of his resignation say they were mad because he called critical race theory, quote, a manufactured crisis. President Biden wants Congress to pass another spending bill that will fund more COVID vaccines, tests, and other resources. While COVID spread is very low across the country, White House officials say there won't be enough supply for second booster shots this fall if Congress does not authorize more money. For now, the booster is only recommended for the nation's most vulnerable population. The push from the president is for Congress to pass a multi-billion dollar spending bill before they go to spring recess. Businesses have been on the rebound now that COVID spread is lower, but some are still experiencing supply chain issues. In our Sunday conversation, we talked to U.S. Secretary of Commerce Gina Raimondo. The supply chain issue in the U.S. was coupled with a worker shortage and congested ports for months. Now things have improved, but businesses are still seeing delays on products. We've made a lot of progress, but there's more to do. Secretary of Commerce Gina Raimondo told us, simply put, the U.S. is very dependent on products that are not made in the country. Another issue is that the country never monitored supply chain flow. Now there's a push to create an office in the Commerce Department that does just that. And there's bipartisan support in Texas. America's unusual. Most other countries have that. And there's a piece of legislation right now making its way through Congress called the Competes Act that just we have to get it passed. Senator Cornyn's in favor of it. Congresswoman Johnson's in favor of it. One of the things it would do is establish a supply chain office here at the Department of Commerce so that we're constantly mapping and monitoring supply chains so this doesn't happen again. We're not caught by surprise. We predict bottlenecks and choke points before they happen and destabilize our economy. Aside from supply chain issues as a whole and the Russian invasion of Ukraine keeping gas prices high, Raimondo says her focus is on creating more chip technology that's used in cars, satellites, and for the military. A bill making its way through Congress called the CHIPS Act appears to have some bipartisan support. It really is a crisis. We have a solution. It's called the CHIPS Act. It's working its way through Congress. We got to get it done. We cannot move fast enough in order to make that happen so that we can get back into the business of making chips in America. By the way, employing Americans doing that. I know in Texas, you have Texas Instruments and Siemens, you're a leader already. It's a lot of jobs at stake. And I, I hope that, like I said, Senator Cornyn and Congresswoman Johnson can get this done quickly. For all the latest political news, you can head over to our website, fox4news.com. We'll see you next time for another edition of The Politics of Texas.